Hey guys, my name's Troy Hoffman. I'm the founder of Simplaris and the founder of Balance Genics and an executive mentor. What we do every week here is we're creating these things called fireside chats. We basically transform this entire space into a studio every week. Four, three. In the house today, we've got Walt Tomolina. Today in the studio, we have Ty Cannon. He's also one of the top anti-aging doctors in the country and probably even in the world. And what I want you to see is the opportunity to be exposed to all these different entrepreneurs, all these different people that can share their wisdom and insights because one idea can change your life today. They want to be part of the outcome, but they don't necessarily want to be part of the process because it's scary. And if they hear you say collision and they're afraid of conflict, I gotta there, go to the restroom, yeah, yeah. I'm out of here. I'm out of here, yes, <laughs> they've done that. I realize there's over 27 different hormones and hormone metabolites that exert a tremendous effect on your body, your mind, your performance, and whether you live or you die. You can actually like, apply, like, apply something to that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What everybody wants is a change in results, measurable results. Yes. More money in the bank, more cooperation among my employees, yeah. or yes. I want to drop weight, or I want to gain weight. There's Correct. measurable results that are, well, how do you get results? Uh -huh. Results come from changing behavior. What I do, my activity, my actions. My actions produce my results. That's right. Got well, it. what is it that changes action? Thought. Thought. What I say to myself in my say. mind's ear, what I, uh, what I see in my mind's eye, mm -hmm. what I feel, that creates not only my actions, but my emotional life. One new concept, one new thing you can take back to your workplace, one new thing you can take back to your company, one new thing you can take back to your family to change the way you think and see and change everything about what you're doing and the actions you're going to take. All right, folks, welcome back for part two with Dr. Robert D. McDonald. If you missed the first episode, literally stop today, don't watch it, go back and watch the first episode, then come back and watch this one, or you can just keep watching right now. This is gonna be even doubly as amazing as the first one right now. So the first one, we got down the history of where Dr. Robert D. McDonald created his destination method from Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP, and how some of the suffering in his life transformed him and made him passionate about detecting his mission, living out his mission of easing the suffering of this world. And so today we're gonna to dive a little bit more into really kind of like, what is Neuro Linguistic Programming? Like, how, how is our mind wired? Like, why do we think what we think? And how do we create the shifts in our mind to change our behaviors, to change our thoughts, to change the actions and what we are attracting to our lives by our beliefs, by our, the behaviors we're doing, the way we see ourselves or the, see the world we're living in. Because when we change our thoughts, we change our behaviors, we change everything about our lives and, and we start getting the results and attracting the results we really want in our life. So if you could dive in, Sure. And explain like what what is NLP? Sure. How how does this mind? How do I? What am I doing to myself that changes something here that causes me to wake up differently or or talk to people yeah. differently or or act with authority and lead my company better? Change the way I yes. see my own life so I'm actually taking actions in different ways and just showing up in a whole different way to attract more, to be more, to yep. have more, to to impact more people's lives, like. Mm -hmm. What is NLP and why does it work so well? Well, it's a wonderful question and it's a wonderful understanding that you've presented here, which is how do I change my thinking so that I get different results yeah. in life? And what people really are looking for is to cha change their lives in such a way that their results are in alignment with what they've set out uh -huh. to get. So neuro-linguistic programming uh, is, a, is a, a label for uh, this tool set that Richard Bandler and John Grinder created in 1976. They called it then neuro-linguistic programming on, in 76. Before that, there were a bunch of tools, but they, they didn't have a label for it. Neuro stands for neurology. Linguistics is, has to do with language that we use, not only our verbal language, what we say out loud and write down, but also our body language. Uh -huh. and, uh, and programming is setting up step-by-step -step procedures to get a result. Yes. So neuro-linguistic programming is, okay, I want to program my neurology, because in those days, well, in fact, even today, NLP regards the mind as the brain. Now, in my view, the mind is not the brain, but in the world of NLP, uh, the mind is the brain. So they say, well, I want to program my brain, my neurology, 
how do I do that? Yeah. And they said, well, you need to organize your language, change the way you talk to yourself, mm -hmm. for example, auditorily, yeah. change what you see in your mind's eye visually, mm -hmm. and change what you're feeling in your body. Mm -hmm. So they, they were saying, listen, there, your, your way of thinking, thought itself, is made of pictures and sounds, feelings, tastes, and smells. In other words, so mm -hmm. thoughts are made up of pictures, pictures, sounds, sounds, kinesthetic feelings, kinesthetic feelings, tastes and smells, tastes and smells. Yeah, the five. Those are our thoughts. Yeah, the five sensory. So systems. a word means something in these five. Well, if I if I have a certain uh, thought, uh -huh. it's going to come in one of those forms. Got so it. I say to you. What's the color of your car? Yeah. And you say, well, it's white or blue. If you ask me I, about my car, I'd say, well, it's silver. Well, how do I know that it's silver? Because uh -huh. in my mind's eye, mentally, I see my car and I report what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So what I'm, I, my thoughts are made of pictures in that case. But if you say, well, what's the sound of a train whistle in the distance? I have a memory of that and I hear that in my mind. Mm -hmm. And what does it feel like to walk um, on, on the sand, on the sand near the beach, where the water comes up and goes over my uh -huh. feet, or what does it feel like to get into a hot tub of water on a cold morning? What does it feel like to sit at the harbor and right. see those amazing right. boats and hear the sounds of the motorcycles yeah. running up and down the highway? Well, like we can right. hear a sound and the pictures start firing. Right. I mean, hear the boat engine that's like right. bum, 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 going bum, bum. by. You know what type of boat that is just by the sound that's of it. Right. I can tell you what type of boat that is. That's right. So thoughts type of motorcycle. are made of these modalities. Uh -huh. I, I have a feeling I'm sitting here in the sunlight and the shade and the and the and the wind and the temperatures. Oh, I feel it on my body. It's yes. kinesthetic. It's not visual and it's yes. not auditory. So if you, have you ever had a ten, time when you, you went in somebody's house and you went, oh my goodness, this smells like grandma's house or something. Yes. It's like, oh, the scent yes. uh, creates a, a, a memory. Mm -hmm. So our thoughts are made of picture, sounds, feelings, yeah. tastes, and smells. And the, and the thing that NLP did, mm -hmm. that uh, prior to NLP, it was not um, solid, was this. It says, your thoughts are created by picture, sounds, feelings, tastes, and smells, and that creates your emotional life. So our thoughts create our emotional life. That's right. And these five create our thoughts, which create our That's emotional right. life. That's right. And if we can change these thoughts, thoughts we're going to change our emotional we're life. We're going to change our emotional That's life, right. which will change our behavior. Not, well, not only, well, no, they're, they're kind of simultaneous. So what we, what everybody wants is a change in results. Mm -hmm. They go, I don't have enough money. The result right. I want is more money. Yeah. I don't have the, the, the corporate structure. I don't have a sufficient uh, number of people cooperating within yeah. my company structure to get the results that we all could do if yeah. they would just cooperate. Yeah. I want results, uh -huh. results, measurable results. Yes. More money in the bank, more cooperation among my employees, yeah. whatever, I, I want results, or yes. I want to drop weight, or I want to gain weight. There's Correct. measurable results that are, well, how do you get results? Uh -huh. Results come from changing behavior what I do, my activity, my actions. Correct. So my actions produce my results. My actions produce my results. That's right. Got well, it. what is it that changes action? Thought. Thought. What I say to myself in my say. mind's ear, what I, what, I, uh, what I see in my mind's eye, mm -hmm. what I feel, that creates not only my actions, but my emotional life. So, so, so by changing one little thing about the way we're thinking about ourselves, instead of going down this path, it may just take That's us right. down this other path. For example, I might say, easily. I might say, I want, uh, I want much more money in my bank account, uh -huh. and then I, I, I do want that, and then I hear this, these words in my head going, "Oh, that's impossible. Hmm. That can't happen. I'm yeah. not worth it. There's something wrong with. Well, what if I try that and I fail?" And those thoughts create an emotion of depression, mm -hmm. and influences my action, which is I don't do what's necessary to get the result of making some more money. Yeah. So results, whether it's money or relationships, let's take it out of the world of money and say, I want a loving, wonderful relationship with someone. Well, what's stopping me? My actions are not bringing that about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what makes it so that my actions don't bring that about? What I, my thoughts do. And then you go, so notice those are three levels. The, the bottom level is result. Mm -hmm. the, the, the level just above that are actions and emotions. Actions and emotions. And, and so actions and emotions create results. Uh huh. What creates actions and emotions? Thought. Thoughts. What creates thoughts is beliefs. Beliefs. So what I believe about myself will control my thoughts. And beliefs are changeable, and then above that, you mean convictions. I identity. So right? belief, beliefs and convictions are on the same level. Got but it. But higher than beliefs and convictions and values and all that is I, who am I? Who so am if, I? if I believe that I'm the kind of person who never succeeds, 
here's an identity level thing. I know people who believe uh, that they they are natural that their nature is to be allergic to cats. Okay, they believe. Like I've been saying that I'm allergic to gluten, dairy, and eggs. Right, and that's an identity. I am, as opposed uh -huh. to. My body responds, which is different my, than I am. My body responds to gluten, dairy, and eggs. I get congested in my a stomach way that I don't like. In a way that I don't like. Which is different than which is different uh, than, than saying, "Oh, I am allergic." I am allergic. So, so an identity level statement solidifies it. Like, so I've been how, saying that forever. I've been saying right. I'm allergic to mm -hmm. gluten, dairy, and right. eggs. I've almost programmed my body to respond. Well, you programmed your identity that uh -huh. way. And people learn that typically in society. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things that happens in the destination method is we're aware that we're wounded in society and we are healed in society. Mm -hmm. We need community to be healed. We need mm -hmm. other people, connection, relationship, mm -hmm. a good sense of goodness about yes. each other, yes. right? And then, so for example, you're, you're saying, oh, I'm allergic to, to gluten or I'm allergic to dairy or something like that. I've worked with lots of people allergic to dairy. What, what has to happen? They have to be, to understand, oh, it's not my identity to be allergic to dairy. It's that my body is responding to dairy in a way that I don't like. So what do, what am I doing mentally? Do I say that instead no, of well, you I just, am? No, we just ask the question. Yes, exactly. You go, my body's responding to it. My body's responding to dairy in a way I don't like. No, in a way I don't like. So I go, what needs to change? I need to change whatever is causing my body to respond that way. Mm -hmm. And it is a belief. It's a belief. So I go, oh, how do I change the belief? So it goes identity, yeah. then, then belief, yeah. then thoughts, thoughts and actions, thoughts, then results. Uh, thoughts, thoughts create then actions, actions and, and emotions. Thoughts, thoughts create, create actions, actions and, and emotions, emotions, then results. That's right. Got it, okay. And so th these are, this is a part of what's, uh, what's called the creative order. Mm -hmm. So in the, in, the, in the destination method, I created uh, a, a vast understanding of how human beings function. So one is the creative order. It goes, not only does it go to identity, it goes to soul and the spirit. Uh -huh. So typically people don't want to talk much about soul and spirit. Yeah. It, soul and spirit is very much like uh, people around the dinner table say, never talk about religion or, or politics uh, because people will fight. Uh -huh. So, uh, so I, I'm very, very clear about soul and spirit and how it functions and so on. But not everybody wants to know about that. They want some changes, they want results, uh -huh. and it's, it's, they can do just fine right up to yeah. identity level. So other people say, I'd like to know about identity level, but what's beyond identity? Yeah. What's beyond that? What, what's, what is this soul business? And so beyond identity, back soul here is soul spirit. and spirit. That's right. And, that, and that's where the destination method takes this and then right. runs it through all of this. Yeah. It runs meaning, through it everything. runs heart, it runs, it runs true, like whatever God, the universe is just flowing now through all of that's this. That's right. Got that it. is exactly right. Now, people don't have to believe in soul and spirit to benefit. They can come, many people come to me and they go, I don't believe any of that stuff, but I want to stop smoking, or I want to drop weight, or I want to gain weight, or I want to improve my relationship with, uh -huh. with uh, my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, or have internal conflict. What, uh -huh. Shocking, I have a terrible memory. I was raped as a child and I can't get past it. And they go, okay, what we do is we go, that emotional experience that is no longer wanted, I've worked with thousands of women who've been raped, and resolve their rape trauma in one session. Mm -hmm. And they go, well, how is it possible? Because I understand how the mind configures itself wow. so that, so that the, 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 the horrible experience mm -hmm. remains in the body. And what yeah. we need to do is transform that horrible experience. We need to free the person. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in the last time we met together, uh, the, the destination method is about the resolution of unnecessary human suffering. There's a great deal of unnecessary yes. suffering now, Troy. So much, so much unnecessary there suffering. There used to be, that it was all necessary. Yeah. Be before the advent of NLP, uh -huh. before the advent of one, for example, one method in NLP created by Richard, uh, by um, Steve and Connie Ray Andreas, it's called the grief resolution process. The grief yeah. resolution process. Now I was excited about this process because uh -huh. I wrote my master's thesis on grief years wow. before they created wow. this thing. I wrote it, I was so. So this is grief like someone like uh, loses uh, their husband or they lose That's their right. wife. That's right. That sense of grief. I lose my parents. That's right. I lose, I lose a brother. I lose a Bereavement. sister. I lose Bereavement. Like that level of grief, you know. And the feeling of loss. So I wrote loss of a relationship. The reason I wrote my love. master's thesis on grief is because uh -huh. my father committed suicide and I had many deaths in my family. Yeah. Two sisters and a brother died when I was a boy. So all of these things led me to want to focus on how can we resolve the suffering of grief? Mm. So I wrote this. So, uh -huh. uh, so let's talk about that. Do you have a do you have a course or something people can find online that we can actually offer? 
to the public on the resolvement of grief I, I at the this show? I don't have a, a course right now on my, on my website. I, I have taught the resolution of grief for years and years worldwide. Mm -hmm. And we will put together a course on. Maybe the we should put together something. Sure. You why and not? I. Uh, happy to. Course, something and offer it to everybody out there, so you can buy it, so you get access to this. Sure. Because I, I, I agree. Like I, I know what I've gone done. through with what you and I have gone through now. Like we've done, I don't even know how many Tons. hours we're at now. Like we're at 50, 60 hours. I think I'm, I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. I think it's literally something like we're at that level of time. I'm not sure exactly, mm -hmm. but we're cranking through, processing, I'm seeing the results of my life, and going. This stuff's legit. Like this stuff actually transforms at a whole nother level where my actions, my thoughts, and my beliefs about myself have just shifted from over here to a totally different direction. And I see myself taking steps and taking actions and taking new directions I didn't think possible because I went through his process and I and catches I trusted the process. And number two, I did the work. Yes. Number three, I legitimately wanted transformation. Mm -hmm. And number four, I was committed committed to trusting the process. Yeah, so right, yeah. so That's this grief thing true. that you learn from Connie, Ray, and Andreas. Yeah, grief resolution. They are geniuses. They uh -huh. they they resolved the uh, one of the un, uh, unstoppable sufferings of the world. No one in the world escapes grief except by dying before somebody else does. Mm -hmm. So everybody if you love, if you love you'll feel grief when that person's gone, yes. either either because they're dead or because they move away or you, you divorce them. Grief occurs. Grief is this feeling of emptiness or concavity in the chest. And it's whenever a person thinks about the person as being lost and gone and in the past. Well, Steve and Connie Ray, even though I already knew all this stuff about grief because of my master's thesis, when I looked at what they said, I said, this is genius. They understood precisely not only what grief uh, is, but how to resolve it. So I went to Colorado. They said uh, they were thinking about putting on the course and so on. I went there thinking, uh, how can you resolve grief in one or two or three sessions? And I went there saying, that can't be done, but I'm, I'm curious. So I went against my own bias. And I went there and I said, okay, show me. And they showed me. So they, they have to me, they are the, the pinnacle of what psychologists uh, should always be. They went and found out what to do about how to resolve this unnecessary. Grief is now an unnecessary human yeah. suffering. In the past, it was completely necessary. You could never, yeah. nobody knew what to do with it. How do you get rid of this grief? Like, right. how do you go through the stages of the grief? How do you release right. this grief so it doesn't incapacitate That's you? Right. It doesn't make you cry and think about it over and but over again. How do, you re, how do you think about it and say, okay, I'm grateful that I had this moment. Gratitude. This you hit it on the nail you know on the head. You know what I mean? Head. Like, how do I, how do I live so I don't have to like experience this? Like, like my cousin committed suicide. Right. One of my best friends from right. high school right. committed suicide. Right. Another best friend was right. on depression medication and he got and, and, and was sedating and died. Another friend uh, overdosed on drugs. Another right. friend died because of drinking alcohol, racing cars, and, and just because they were so heartbroken. Like it's loss after loss after loss, loss after, after loss. Loss after loss after loss after loss. And so the person how do you release this. It's, so it's like if I feel pain over it, it's a question is do I feel pain over it? Am I upset? Does it make me cry? Yeah. Am I uncomfortable when I think about the people who are now uh, gone? If the answer is yes, then the second question is, do you want to change that? Do you want to, mm. to feel happy yeah. and grateful that they were in your life at all? Do you yeah. want to change from grief to gratitude? Yes. From grief, grief to, to gratitude. gratitude. Do you want to do that? And if you want to do that... Again, the, you've got to want it, number one. Yeah. you got to know your mind's a taxi cab driver. Yeah. And you got to know where the mind wants to go. Yeah. And that's what you can do. You're a taxi cab driver. I tell you where I want to go, yeah. and I want to go from grief to gratitude. And you don't know how. I don't know but how. But I do. But you do. My job as a taxi driver yes. is to know how. Know how, yes. Okay, but I can't. But there's no reason to take you there unless you want to go there. Unless I want to go there, yes. So that's precisely how it is. And so unnecessary human suffering mm -hmm. is now vast. It used to be that there were all, all kinds of suffering was necessary. You had to feel it. Now there's much, much less necessary yeah. suffering. There still is some, but... Grief we can resolve, shock we can resolve, yeah. traumatic experiences such as uh, rape PTSD. and post-traumatic stress disorder, all of that's resolvable. I'm, yeah. I'm the only person in the world who's worked with large groups of people. I'm talking about from 100 to 400 people at uh -huh. a time, all in one room, and helped all of them, 96% of them said in their written report that they resolved their traumatic memory. PTSD. And this is because from doing this process. From knowing how to do PTSD work. Knowing how to do PTSD work. Which is simply another word for a painful memory. Painful memory. PTSD simply means 
post-traumatic, which means after the trauma, I feel bad. Yes. After the trauma, I still feel bad. Years right. have gone by and I still feel bad. Yes. So well, that's what post-traumatic stress disorder means. Yes. I'm, I'm upset Correct. after the thing happened. It happened yesterday or it happened 20 years ago Correct. or 50 years ago, and now I still feel bad. Well, how do we resolve post-traumatic stress disorder? It's another way of saying, how do I make it so that the memory no longer hurts me? Correct. I'm not being How triggered. I'm not, so that my I'm not crying. I'm not right. feeling the pain. I'm not, I'm not feeling the anger. I'm not like, oh, yeah. crap. As a matter of fact, I don't want to deal with this good. anymore. I feel, let me explain, I've got gratitude now Let me explain what, what the conclusion comes to. After you experience something like this, mm -hmm. at, when a person experiences like this, they begin to open to this statement. Now I can see and sing and dance the praises of my past. Now I can see and sing and dance the praises this of my, my past. past. Whereas before it used to imprison me. Does now I can sing. See and sing. Now I can see and, and sing, sing. And dance. And dance. The praises, the praises of my, my past. past. In other words, I'm not I trapped in my we past say that anymore. Again. Now, now I can, can see, see and sing, sing and dance, dance the, the praises, praises of, of my, my past. past. I'm free of my past. I'm free of my past. See, it doesn't. I love it. Yeah, I guess. And, and, I love these quotes. Now, when does We're that. We're changing our minds right now, even exactly. now as we speak. That's yes. right. And in order to be able to, in order for me to see, sing, and dance the praises of my past, I have to do something that changes my mind. Yes. What is my mind? It's made of pictures, sounds, feelings, tastes, yes. and smells. I have to change what I see in my mind's eye. I have to change. So the, we're changing that will change his beliefs, mm -hmm. right? It's going to change right. our beliefs and convictions. That's right. Not convictions, but our beliefs, beliefs and, convictions, and convictions, which will change our actions, which That's will change right. our behavior. And if I change feelings. enough of that, I'll change my identity, who I think I am. All the way back here. Because who I am is what I feel, want, and think. Mm -hmm. My identity is made up of what I feel, feel emotionally, what, mm -hmm. what, I want, what I want, and what I think about stuff. What I want to think. So my identity is what I feel, want and think. what I want, what I think. That's correct. Got and it. so now that, that alters itself quite a lot in life, okay? Well, I used to think this, and now I think that. Yeah. So my identity's changed. That's true. It's very fluid. You can't step in the same yeah. river twice. Yeah. So this keeps changing, keeps changing. But what we want to do, what, what was deeply important for me, yeah. As I needed to know, what did I feel? What do I feel? What do did I, I like? Chocolate? What? Do I like vanilla? Do I like strawberry? strawberry? Exactly that. Like, like which one do you like? Well, not all three, but you. I really like chocolate. Exactly. Right? I go. What and do you like? like you like? What do I you like? like? Strawberry, right? I like. No, I no do you, not. I like, like chocolate. You like chocolate? Huh? Right. Who likes chocolate? Who likes strawberry? So, 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 who knows that I'm right? I'm the only one who knows you're the I'm only right. One that knows you're right. So I got to know what I feel, want, and think. And uh -huh. so the deep problem that happens in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, this is my opinion about the nation and internationally as well, because I do this worldwide, is that people are struggling with identity. It's a big identity issue. Like what, what is true for me? Yeah. Who am I really? What do I feel? What do I want? What do I think? about any given subject. Yeah. And then somebody says, well, no, you're wrong. I say, oh, well, maybe I am wrong. Mm -hmm. And there's this, this kind of like washing around. I don't Correct. know what I feel. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I think. And oh, now I do know what I feel, want, and think, but I can't tell you because it might hurt your feelings. Oh, then I better withhold what I feel, want, and think. And what's needed is a strong yet resilient balanced identity. Identity, way over here, what right. I feel, what I want, what I, want, what I, and think. What I think. Because here's the problem. If I don't tell you what I feel, want, and think. Mm -hmm. If I don't tell you, if I lie to you, mm -hmm. you can't possibly love me. Correct. If I lie to you, it's impossible. It's not that you won't love me. Mm -hmm. You can't love me unless you Correct. know what I feel, want, and think. So this, I think we're going to have to slow down mm -hmm. and wrap up here. We'll talk about grief. Yeah. But what I feel, what I want, and what I think. Is identity. To find true love. Oh, yeah. To be in true rapport, true connection yeah. with just humans in general, let yes. alone to find true love. And this is one of the concepts uh, Dr. Robert shared with me one time that was like truly transformation. That's to have true love, to have a marriage that works, a relationship that works, the identity portion, what I feel, what I want, and what I think. I need to be able to be truthful in alignment and share all that. So, so our lives are in congruence with each other. Same thing within an organization. Same thing yes. within a company. Same yes. thing within friendships. Same thing within an organization anywhere from nonprofit to, to just organization of just friends being buddies. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta know what they feel, what they want, and what they think. And you gotta be ruthlessly committed to telling the truth. Yes. Ruthlessly committed to being like, man, I suck in this area, I'm great in this area. Mm -hmm. Ruthlessly committed to sharing whatever is on your mind. Like, God, I'm freaking pissed off right now. I'm upset, I'm angry. Whatever it is, like, Tell you're being truth. real, raw, and authentic because. in every single moment. Because you wanna be, and this is your choice, if you wanna have deep connections, 
You want to have deep rapport. You want to have deep love in your life, deep feelings, and, and really have an amazing relationship. You got to be able to clearly and articulately tell people what you feel and want and think, or be committed to the process of discovering what that is. Yes. And, and that's Absolutely. part of the process of this grief resolution, and we'd love to share more of this with you. Hopefully we'll work on figuring out a link sure. to get on the bottom so people can, sure. can find ways that we can deliver this at a, at, a, at a reasonable cost for you that will truly impact your lives, folks. A way that you're trying to relieve the pain of the past to open up the possibilities of the future of greatness for your life. And I think we should almost wrap this up because I don't want to take no, too much I, I, time. It's wonderful. But I think we're going to have to spend some more time together, right? I'm ready. We got a whole bunch of I'm other committed. guests we got to film today. Yeah. Um, I love you. I am beyond grateful. I'm very, very grateful. Um, we Fabulous. can spend, we, we just need to do a whole day of filming, I think. Absolutely, I'm committed. I mean, if you guys Let's want a whole day of filming, like let us know more. Any feedbacks and comments, folks? I hope they do. Um, we have some amazing next guests happening. So, super grateful, that's it. I love you, Robert. Thanks, no, man. Thanks so much. And man. folks, thank you for watching the Fireside Chat. Tune in next time to our next episode.